Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Hey, we've got some empty chairs. If anybody wants to sit, you guys can stand. I usually preach about two hours, so just thought I'd warn you. Isn't this great? Oh, man, you know, this is the first time I've ever been to this service because I was always tied up somewhere else on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. So, man, it's, isn't it wonderful to be here? Just the, the, the river, the beautiful view, and someone told me it's actually mild compared to what it has been in the past. Usually it's been really cold up here. How many of you come here every year to this service? You raise your hand if you come every single year. Wow, look at that. Wow, a lot of you are just regulars. I, you know, I never would have believed that uh, church people come out at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, I just, this is a miracle to behold. They make me. Oh, they made Mickey come. <laughs> oh, can everybody hear me in the back okay? Can you hear okay? Okay. All right. Hey, let's all stand up. And let's sing, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Great, great. Now, I've always wanted to do this outside, so I'm going to say He is risen, and you're going to say He is risen indeed. Okay, you got your part? You ready, everybody? Back here, all together now. He is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you in the outdoors, and thank you for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for the trees, the river. And thank you for your people being here to honor your son, Jesus. We celebrate him today. And we are so thankful that he did not stay in the grave. He came out, Lord, three days later. And we are so thankful that we serve our risen Savior today. And he's in the world today, Lord. Thank you for loving us and thank you for giving us Jesus. For it's in his lovely name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. I'm actually, uh, my sermons are like baloney. You can cut them off wherever you want to. So, uh, I, I, you know, I don't get to preach as much as I used to, so I, I get to study a lot more. So I just, this sermon kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It went into one notebook, then two notebooks, and three notebooks. And I said, I'm just going to kill those people up at Humpback Bridge. So I'm, I split it in half. I'm going to bring half of it this morning and half of it over at the main church at 1030. So if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you over there at Grace Brethren Church, South Carpenter Drive, just a little commercial in there. And we'd love to have you there. Faith is such an important element in the Christian life. If you look back on your Christian life, you will discover that it's been a, a cycle, a constant cycle going on in your life. You'll turn to Scripture. You'll hear a Scripture in a sermon, a Sunday school lesson, in devotions. You'll memorize a verse. You'll hear a verse maybe in a song. And that, that verse will kind of build up your spiritual stamina and faith. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So faith originates from the Word of God, from the truth of God. So we get that faith, and so we go out into life. We're full of faith. We read our devotions in the morning. And we're all fired up and we go to our job and all of a sudden those 20 preschoolers running around screaming and hollering, suddenly our faith begins to evaporate. <laughs> we start saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, what is going on here? And, and we run into some problems and difficulties. And then we begin to feel doubt. Did I really have that faith? 
Is God really going to bring me through this? Is God going to solve this problem? Is God going to work this out for me? My heart is heavy. Is God going to help me? Is God going to work through this? And, and so what do we do? Hopefully and prayerfully we have learned through experience that we go back where? To the Scripture. To the Word of God. We get refueled. We get refired up. We begin to read the Word of God. And we begin to understand the truth of God's Word. So we go back out into life again. And there's that faith again. But then we face that obstacle again. And, and it's been this cycle. If you reflect back on your life, you will see that, that that's the story of your life. You know, sometimes people have the mistaken idea that pastors or missionaries live a problem-free life. You know, they're living for God, so God just makes everything work out for them. But that's simply not true. Pastors experience the same thing you experience. Missionaries experience the same thing you experience. And just when you think you've got this Christian life all figured out, just when you think everything has come together, boom! You get hit again, and you have to go through that process over and over again. Now, today we're going to spend this morning and uh, later this morning in Luke chapter 24. Now, we're going to be, we're, both of our sermons are going to come from Luke 24, and we're going to be talking about the resurrected Jesus this morning. And uh, Luke 24 is an amazing chapter in the Bible. Luke is an amazing guy. Luke was a historian. He was a medical doctor. He, he, he just had a, a brilliant, brilliant mind. And he, he was one of the greatest historians of all time. You may, you may not think of Luke as a historian, but he gave us the Gospel of Luke, and he gave us the book of Acts. And if you take those two books, he wrote a large portion of the New Testament. And what did Luke do? Luke went around and gathered information, and he put together uh, the Gospel of Luke for us. Luke went, and you know the exciting thing was Luke was still alive, when most of the people who had seen Jesus had talked to Jesus and Luke himself, they, they, he was able to talk to people who had actually been with Jesus. And so what makes Luke 24 so exciting is he tells us a story that we don't find anywhere else but in Mark. And Mark only says two verses about it. Just two verses, that's all. John doesn't say anything about it. Matthew doesn't say anything about it. But Luke gives us this long passage in chapter 24 about two men walking on the road to Emmaus. You may have heard of that before. Uh, there's a famous painting of two guys walking down this country road. And when you look around here, you can't help but begin to think about it. Maybe you can see those two guys walking along that little path over there. And, and it's so neat because some people would look at this and say, this is such... A, a, a small story, two disciples walking down a dirt road. What's the significance of that? Well, the significance is Luke wanted a personal story to give to us that would illustrate for us the power of the resurrected Christ, how He can change the direction of our lives. If you're here this morning, you're discouraged, you're despondent, you're sad, you're facing problems, the message of the Bible is that Jesus Christ can change your life. He can revolutionize your life. Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. So there are a couple things I want you to notice in this story. We have the two disciples who are just kind of walking along. They're talking about the... The NCAA tournament, you know, they're talking about their team, and they're just, you know, <laughs> I hope you've read the Bible, you know that's not what's happening. But uh, they're walking along, and they're just talking, and, and they're, they're, they're kind of down, and I, there's a couple things I want you to notice that Luke tells us specifically. Number one, I want you to denote the direction that they walked. Number one, I want you to see the direction that they walked. The Bible says in Luke 24, 13, that very day, uh, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, just to give you some context, because we're not going to take time to read the whole long passage. But just to give you some context, they had been in Jerusalem, Jesus had been crucified, and Jesus had risen from the dead. And so Luke puts it in context, the very day that Jesus arose, these disciples were walking down this road. Same day. This has all happened in the same day. So these two disciples are walking on. And listen what the Bible says. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, 
What's interesting about this is they had heard a report, that, and the context tells us this, they had heard a report that the tomb was empty. And some of the ladies who gave the report said that there was an angel there who said, he's alive. Now, they should have been ecstatic, shouldn't they? They should have been yelling and screaming, Woo! He's alive! He's alive! But instead, we see them just walking along the road. As a matter of fact, the Bible's going to tell us their emotional state in just a moment. They were walking along the road. They were confused. They had put their faith in Jesus Christ. They had thought, and they're going to tell us that later, that they thought that Jesus was the Messiah. They thought Jesus was the one. Now, come on. Hey, I can yell louder. Can you hear me okay without the mic? Okay, I can yell. Yeah, I'll go with that. So, I can read my Bible now. I can hold it up to me and say, <laughs> So, they're going down the road. They're confused. Here was somebody who told them, I'm the Son of God. I'm going to conquer death. Jesus told them, You're, they're going to crucify me and I'm going to come back from the dead. But they didn't believe it. Their faith was weak. That's the theme of our message this morning is the resurrected Christ should infuse us with faith to face the problems of life. Amen? Amen. And no matter what you're facing life, Christ is sufficient. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen? And so these guys are walking along. They're confused. They're fearful. What's going to happen to us now? Jesus is dead. Are the Romans going to kill all of us? They were, they were afraid. Their, their future was full of uncertainty. They didn't know what to do. One of the things we can learn from this account is the pressures of life can drive us away from Christ. Now I know you're sitting here and you're saying, no, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. Nothing in life would ever drive me away from Christ. Be careful. I remember one time I was in the hospital and I'd been diagnosed with leukemia. And I remember one dark night laying in that hospital bed looking at that wall with just the shadows and just saying, God, is this how you treat somebody who dedicated their life to you? God, is this what you do to someone who's trying to live for you and serve you? And I was angry at God and I was expressing it. And I said, okay, God, I, I've had enough. I'm just going to turn away. I, no more preacher, no more God, no, none of that. So I laid there in the bed for about five or ten minutes. And then it dawned on me. What do I have if I don't have God? Just ask yourself that question. Suppose your life stinks right now. Everything's wrong in your life. I know you look so nice and pretty and everything. It's Easter Sunday morning. I know you couldn't have any problems. But just say there's somebody out there who's pulling off really good and you've got me fooled. And you're saying, life stinks. I'm going to turn away from God. Just ask yourself the question. So where are you going to go? Are you going to go to drugs? Is that going to work good for you? Are you going to go to alcohol? Is that going to work good for you? Are you going to go to sin? Are you going to rebel? Are you going to become a hell's angel? Is that going to work for you? Of course it's not going to work for you. So here they are. The pressures of life had driven them away from Christ. Notice second thing. We notice one thing. Notice the direction they walk. Number two, I want you to notice their emotional state. Some of you look pretty rough this morning. I don't know if it's 8 o'clock. Or I don't know if it's lighting here. Some of you look like you had a rough night. You know, you just, you're just like, my wife dragged me out here. I don't want to be here. And I don't want to listen to this guy go on and on. You know, and, and just get this over and get me out of here. And you know what? Your emotional state is communicated to your face. Your face is telling me where you are emotionally. And some of you are not in a happy place. <laughs> I can tell you. Now look what the Bible says. Jesus walks up to them. Now this is, this is so cool. The Bible is so cool. Jesus walks up to these disciples and they don't know who He is. He's like a superhero with a mask on. They don't know who He is. The Bible says they did not know it was Jesus. You see, because if they'd known it was Jesus, you know what they would have done? <laughs> oh, hi, Jesus. Uh, uh, this is Johnny Christian here. I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> and, and, but Jesus wanted them to realize where they were and what they were believing. So they, the Bible says they did not know who, who he was. 
and he listens to their conversation and, and they're moaning and groaning and they're saying, we thought this was the Messiah. We thought this was the one. We had hoped this was the one. They were doubting Jesus. They were in a state of total unbelief. Listen to this. And he, Jesus, said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? Hey, what's up with this? Why are you talking like this? Don't you believe in Jesus? That's what's implied. Don't you believe that he was going to come back to life? He told you. Don't you believe that? That's what implied in that statement. He says, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other? And I love, Luke is a great historian. Because listen to what Luke adds in. Listen to what Luke says. And they stood still looking sad. Everything gone wrong with my wife. And it doesn't fight in my wife. Oh, poor disciples. <laughs> The irony of it, the irony of it, they were a couple inches away from Jesus, the living Son of God, and they didn't realize it. And so when we lose faith, we become sad. Well, let me ask you something. Does Jesus desert us when we're sad? Did He desert the disciples? No, He was right there. He was right there, and they did not even know it. Sometimes we get down in the mouth and we get discouraged and we start complaining to God and we don't even realize that Jesus Christ is right here with us. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Jesus said, not only am I going to be with you, but I'm going to be in you and you're going to be in me. You know what, if you're a believer, if you're a child of God, you're all wrapped up in Jesus. You can't get away from Jesus. He's in you and you're in Him. Isn't that a good thing? I love to preach the norm. I just like to preach the whole sermon this guy right here, man. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. He's alive. He's alive. Thank you, all three of you. All right. Note their emotional state. They were sad. They were, they were depressed. Now, let me warn you about something. I'm a real emotional person. I don't know if you can tell that, but I'm real emotional. And sometimes that gets me in trouble. Because if you live by emotions, this is the kind of Christian life you live. Up and down. You hear a great song, and you say, oh, I'm on the mountaintop. Then somebody fusses at you. I started to say cusses at you. Cusses at you at work, and you're down in the bottom again. You're up on the mountaintop. Then you show up in the office, and you're down again. If you live by your emotions, your Christian life is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. If you operate on emotions, you will never have a walk of faith the way you would like to have a walk of faith. Emotions can blind us to the truth. Remember the story of Peter walking on the water? You remember that story? The disciples are going across the sea in a terrible, terrible storm. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes walking up on the water beside them. And they all look over there at first. They're, they're shocked. They don't know who it is. And then Peter realizes it's Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, can I come to you on the water? And the Lord said, come. So Peter is the only other person other than Jesus that walked on the water. So he gets out of the boat. He starts walking towards the water. I mean, towards Jesus on the water. Now the Bible says everything's great because he's got his eyes on Jesus, he's focusing on Jesus. But then all of a sudden he turns to his side, he sees a dark gray cloud. He sees some lightning, he hears some thunder, and he, and he takes his eyes off of Christ and he begins to focus on his circumstances and the emotion of fear comes in overwhelmed. What does the Bible say? He starts to sink. So Jesus comes and picks him up out of the water, puts him on the boat. If we operate by emotions, it will cause us to live a life of, of sporadic faith. We'll be up and down and up and down. But sometimes we have to go against what we feel. Peter, by faith, should have went against that fear, but it was hard. And I can't judge him. I wasn't walking on the water. But if we live by emotions, we will constantly be up and down in our Christian life. We cannot operate on emotions alone. Finally, I want you to note the condition of their faith. We've seen the direction that they walked. We've seen their emotional state. Then I want you to notice the condition of their faith. 
This is what they tell Jesus. They said, and how the chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Notice, they said, we had hoped Jesus was the guy. So they were doubting that Jesus was the Messiah. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. They had heard that from these women who said angels had told They were doubting even angels of God. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. So you know what these disciples were saying? Okay, we'll believe. We'll believe. If Jesus appears to us right here and we see the resurrected Jesus, we'll believe. So we, we, we'll believe if we can see. But the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So were they having biblical faith? No, they were having human faith. They were saying, okay, we'll believe if we can see. So faith is the key to resurrection power. So the story goes, they continue walking on the road, they come to their place where they're staying. And so Jesus starts, like he's going to head, keep on down the road. They say, no, no, come in, spend the night with us, stay with us, keep, us, keep, keep, keep with us overnight. So he comes in. So he goes into the room and they say, okay, hey, it's late. It's time to break out the bagels, you know, some Diet Coke, some cheese. Let's, let's just eat something here, okay? So they sit down. I, I want to see this video. I want to get to heaven. The disciples are sitting there. They're passing out the nachos and the Doritos and they're just eating everything. And so Jesus does something really unusual. In the Holy Land, the custom was that when you were the guest, the owner of the house always served you. That was the custom. But Jesus did something amazing here that they didn't understand. Jesus reaches over and grabs a, grabs a loaf of bread and right there in front of the disciples he just breaks it. Just that simple motion. He just breaks a loaf of bread. And the Bible says in that moment, in that precise second, the, the shades fell off their eyes and they saw it was Jesus. What brought them to the place? They remembered when Jesus broke bread at the Last Supper. They remembered the night before he went to the cross and died. He broke bread. And when he broke that bread, their eyes were open. And they said, Hallelujah! It's Jesus! And guess what happened? Poof! He was gone. He was gone. Poof! They didn't even get to enjoy it. I mean, he was, poof! He was gone like a superhero. He was gone. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible said those guys' faith went into overdrive. They jumped up. It was late at night. Usually didn't travel at night because of robbers and things, but, but hey, they didn't care. They said, let's go. They went out and they jumped on their Hondas and they went to Jerusalem and they said, he's alive. He's alive. Isn't that great? Amen. That's why we celebrate Easter. He's alive. Because he's alive. Now you've got to ask yourself a question. This morning as we close, what kind of faith do you have? Do you have a faith that Show me. Prove it to me. Or do you have a faith that says, God, I'm going to believe your word. Even when I can't see evidence, I'm still going to trust you. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What are you facing today? What are you facing in life? Vicky's going to come and sing for us now. And then we're going to have a closing prayer. And as we close in prayer, I just want you to think about what you are facing in your life this morning. And I want you to ask God to give you the faith to trust Him no matter what you may be going through. Because our God is the God of the impossible. Our God is the God who answers prayer. And our God is the God who raises the dead. Listen to Mickey as he sings, and then we'll close in prayer. Thanks for listening so well.
I want to thank you all for coming. It's good to see you all. Uh, this morning, I'm going to sing a, call, a song called um, At the Foot of the Cross. <coughs> At the foot of the cross Where grace and suffering meet You have shown me your love Through the judgment you received and you won my heart Yes, you won my heart Now I can trade these ashes in for beauty And wear forgiveness like a crown Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, where I am made complete. You have given me life through the death you bore for me and you've won my heart yes you've won my heart now i can trade these ashes in for beauty and where forgiveness like a crown Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down At the foot of the cross I trade these ashes in for beauty and where forgiveness like a crown Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down At the foot of the cross You know, friends, we come here today to praise and honor and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. And we come here today uh, to remember what He did for us on the cross. And as I was preparing for today, I got to thinking about the cross and, and, and what led up to that. And you know, Jesus Christ was sitting on His throne in heaven. And He came here to earth. And He came because He loved us so very much. And when He came, he knew very good and well exactly what was going to happen and what he was going to have to go through. He knew that they were going to uh, ridicule him, humiliate him, mock him, curse him. He knew they were going to beat him. He knew they were actually going to make a crown of thorns and put it on his head and push it down until he bled. He knew that they were going to make him carry the very cross that he was going to be crucified on it, at least part of the way to Calvary. And finally, he knew the anguish that he was going to have to suffer on the cross for all of us. And he did it because he loved us so much. And now because of that, I can trade these ashes in for beauty and wear forgiveness like a crown coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross I trade these ashes in for beauty And wear forgiveness like a crown 
coming to kiss the feet of mercy. I lay every burden down. I lay every burden down. I lay every burden down at the foot of the cross. I'm weighing every burden down. I'm laying every burden down. I'm laying every burden down. Billy, come, please. Billy's going to close us in prayer. Thank you, Mickey. Luke's theme verse in the Gospel of Luke is Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the theme that runs from through the entire Gospel of Luke. This morning we've celebrated the resurrection of Christ. We've heard about the suffering of Jesus on the cross. I hope that each and every one of you have come to the place in your life where you put your faith and trust in Jesus. If you haven't come to that place, I'm going to lead us in prayer to close the service out. And as I pray publicly, you can pray privately. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Many of us can bear testimony that there was a time where we met Jesus face to face and received Him as our personal Savior. And our life has never been the same since we've met that resurrected Jesus. And He can change your life too if you'll just trust Him. Thank you for coming. Hope you have a wonderful Easter. Thank you so much for being a part of this service. Let's all stand for a closing prayer. And I want to thank Grace Brethren Church for sponsoring this service. And it's been wonderful. I really enjoyed being here today. Thank you guys so much. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. And we thank you for Jesus, Father. He's the reason that we're here today. We celebrate His birth, His life, His death, His resurrection, His ascension, and His soon coming back, Lord. We, pra we praise Him today for all that He is and who He is and what He's done for us. Father, we do pray if there's anybody in this nice group of people here this morning who doesn't know Christ as their Savior, we pray that this morning they would turn in faith to Jesus. They would find Him as their living Lord and Savior. God, go with us now as we leave this place. Thank you for the blessings of today. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in His name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Billy. Hey, thank you. That's great. 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 That's great.